Hello, NMA. We are live for our final celebration party. Yoo-hoo! You guys all made it. This is so amazing. You can all be very proud of yourselves, and we are very proud of you. So I am Gunnar Blom. You know me all. Um, and I'm very happy to have uh, on screen with me here lots of fabulous people from NMA. And I am technically the president and chair of the board of Neuromatch. Uh, but and practically NMA, too. <laughs> practically. So, um, so what I do at NMA is I help run all the surveys. I help run all of the payment for TAs, which is very important. I help run professional development. I help do a lot of administrative tasks. And I also this year helped out a lot with the Discord to make sure that you all got where you needed to go. Uh, and so that is my job. And in the real world, I am an assistant professor of cognitive, cognitive sciences at UC Irvine in California, just south of LA. Awesome. Next we have Anne. OK, hi, I'm Anne. I am here representing the projects team. We started meeting a couple of weeks ahead of the start of Neuromatch Academy, putting together project ideas for you, project templates, figuring out what those templates were going to say and how they were going to be organized and then getting the data sets together that you guys could work with. And in real life, I'm an assistant professor at Northwestern University in Chicago, just getting my lab started up as of last October, uh, doing theory and computational modeling. Woohoo! very exciting. OK, and then we have Ella. Hi, I'm Ella. I am the curriculum lead for the Comp Neuro course at Neuromatch, uh, taking over from Gunnar's wonderful work last year. I, in real life, I am a lecturer and curriculum developer for Comp Neuro at Harvard. Awesome, thank you, Ella. And finally, we have Mohammed. Hi, I'm Mohammed. I'm representing today the outreach, communication, and diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, yeah, so in real life, I'm an Egyptian who's working as a postdoc in KCNI in Toronto, Canada, working on understanding psychiatric disorders from the neuroscience as well as like clinical applications, plus uh, making new ML uh, architectures that is inspired off of neuroscience. Awesome. Thank you so much. And Mohammed, you want to uh, share some slides with us, right? Hopefully. And then the party can begin. It's not a party until there's slides. I know. Every party needs slides, right? Every, every academic party needs slides. OK, so as I said, we are celebrating you. So if you want to advance the slides, and this is you. You are the NMA community, you TAs, you students. You are NMA. We're just the people in the background that make anime happen, but you are actually anime and you did a tremendous job. It was so fun seeing you work in your pods, working on your projects, working on the tutorials, and you made it through all three weeks. Wow. Next. And on top of all the hard scientific work, you were also amazingly creative and we had lots of fun. Uh, as organizers to watch you produce all these fun logos. Um, and I'm sure you have seen many of them already. And um, getting um, your, your, your artsy um, side out, um, despite the fact of I'm sure you were exhausted at the end of the day. So that was really fun for us and, and I hope also fun for you to, uh, to do. OK, lots of, of hilarious ones. And of course, we should uh, thank all the teaching assistants who essentially wear the face of NMA during, yeah, big round of applause, during the last three weeks. They're the ones that brought the materials to you. They're the ones that guided you through. And then, you know, I don't have to tell you if you're a student, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you're a TA watching and listening, Thank you so much. You're all amazing. And so we had like two, two different kinds of TAs this year, um, which was different from last year. We had the regular TAs, but we also had the project TAs. And, and so juggling that, especially as projects TAs, 
uh, was, uh, I heard, sometimes uh, a little bit challenging, but you all rose up to the challenge, both project TAs and regular TAs, and you made it happen. And you've survived the three weeks. So congratulations on that to everyone. And so with that, it is my great pleasure to pass the torch to Ella. Hi, I am just going to talk for like four minutes about some curriculum stuff. So next slide. So this is what you all learned after we over the last three and a half weeks. And it is very confusing to look at, which shows how much you learned because you learned all of those little bubbles. Um, so if we can go to the next slide, hopefully this will work. I'm just going to let our uh, lovely organizers tell you about what we learned. <laughs> So in week one, we're learning about what models? Yep, that's right. What? Just as I said. Can't you tell us about the models in week one? I already have. How? Oh, no. That's week two. What? Exactly. <laughs> Fine. Um, I don't suppose uh, you could tell us about week three? Why? No, forget it. OK, let's ask something different. What is the right kind of model for characterizing inter-spike intervals? Exactly, that's it. No, what's the kind of model you used in your paper? No, no, why? Because we want to know how to characterize inter-spike intervals. This model won't tell you that. Why? Right, that's all it will tell you. What? OK, never mind. Tell us how models work. Yeah, generally, but only if you're asking the right kind of question. Well, what is the right kind of question we need to ask? No, no, you need to be asking how. We are asking how. Well, then you're all set. Oh, whatever, I give up. We'll just do deep learning. Oh, no. <laughs> So that was our lovely organizer's comedy submission and surveyed our uh, material pretty well uh, based on very well-known Abbott and Costello routine. So you learned about lots of different what models, especially in week one when we're learning about machine learning, we're often using it to ask what questions. Then later you learned more biophysical models and you're often asking how questions. And then you learned all about these stochastic processes and you were, those can be lots of different types of models, but you often saw them in the context of asking why questions. So I just wanted to briefly mention the life cycle of NMA content, just to highlight how amazing our volunteers are and what they've accomplished. So every piece of content you see has gone through all of these boxes. We have reviewers. Well, first of all, we have our amazing content creators. Then we have reviewers. Then we have editors. Then we have a full dress rehearsal with TAs who go through the material. And then we do the whole thing again. And then we have lots of captioning, translation, lots of checking of the code, including by a lovely robot we've built for ourselves. And then finally, you see the material. So there are just so many people involved with all of these steps. And if you want to help make the content even better, you should come join us for next year. Uh, next slide. Uh -oh. oh, I we think we have Muhammad. lost the slides. All right, well, while someone gets Muhammad back, I actually don't need these slides to talk about it. <laughs> so <laughs> I um, just wanted to go through a few things that we've done to highlight that we've done different for this year. And so I do want to say that all of the changes we made were based on the feedback we got in our evaluation report at the end of last year. So just a plug that you should all fill in the post course survey so you can help us make even better changes for next year. So, oh, we have our slides back. Thank you. Dude. So we added a lot of prereq stuff. We added this neuro video series. We added our all our math days on linear algebra, calculus and statistics. Next slide. 
We tried to make it slightly less overwhelming a course for you by freeing up some time by adding project days and changing some of the live Q&As to podcasts so you can get off Zoom. We updated a lot of the content days um, in both major and minor ways. And then we rearranged our days into more conceptual modules. And then next slide. And then my personal favorite improvement was the Jupyter book, where we now have all the material nicely packaged um, instead of you needing to deal with a million links. And we do want to keep iterating on this book and making it even better. And one thing but I realized- Emma, some... but, but Ella, like that, that is a very biased evaluation of this being your favorite aspect because you actually did that. Yeah, so I can we all, we, but we all we we all agree, of course. This was like so tremendous. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I I am being a little arrogant and saying my thing was my favorite, but I'm allowed. <laughs> you deserve all the credit. <laughs> um. So yeah, I do want to also mention. I realize today some of our students don't know that all of our material is under this really permissive license, um, the CCBY license. So you can use this material, it's all freely accessible, but you can also use it yourself. Um, I have stolen material and taught it in my classes, but it's not stolen because it's allowed under the license. So all of this amazing material, including some of our amazing artwork is under this license. So it's very usable by you. All right, and with that- and you, can even, you can even use it to run like a business if you want, it's all allowed under that license. <laughs> well, let's not encourage that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if they want to copy this, if it's that great, that would be a tremendous validation. All right. We are asking you not to make a profitable business based on our materials. <laughs> we'll All just right. have to get better then. <laughs> um, so now uh, Anne is going to be talking about projects. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yeah, so for the next uh, four or five minutes, I'll talk about the projects. Uh, next slide. So I was part of the projects team that was headed up by Marius, and we did a lot of work to prepare these projects. First of all, we added in a bunch of new data sets. Uh, we needed more fMRI because a lot of you guys wanted to work on that. We also had a lot of requests for EEG data sets. So Marius, like the Friday before Neuromatch Academy started, was like frantically downloading data sets and putting together those for the, the EEG and ECOG and LFP projects. We also had a new data set from the Allen Institute. That's a, a bunch of unpublished data from their imaging sessions and a new social behavior data set that my collaborators at Caltech contributed. Uh, we tried a bunch of different things before we settled on the project templates that you saw. At one point, we had this kind of quest structure with side quests and hints that you could get from TAs, which didn't end up happening this year, but maybe sometime in the future, we'll go, with, go to the, the project card game version of Neuromatch Academy. Um, and then, yeah, lots of planning and training of the project TAs who are amazing and just a gigantic asset to making these projects hold up together. Okay, the chat likes the idea of the Neuromatch Academy project card game. <laughs> we'll have to work on that. Uh, in terms of whether it was all worth it, um, I guess the group names kind of speak for themselves. You guys were incredible. There were so many awesome projects and awesome uh group ideas and takes on the data sets and the things that you guys were doing with them. I'm a big fan of a lot of these. I think we should just take a moment to absorb some of the names that are happening on this slide. I'm, I like recurrent boiling shrimps to go or not to go. Many of these are, are wonderful. I can't um, net no satisfaction. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> In terms, we did a little bit of analysis of the projects themselves. Uh, we found no statistical significance between the proposals and the abstracts, which I guess means that nothing crashed and burned and blew up. But on the other hand, I guess we have a negative result in our meta-analysis, but looks like you guys had a boatload of different modalities, different types of models that you were building, and that those all came through in the final abstracts, which is fantastic. So now onto Project TA awards because every category needs awards. These are our incredible Project TAs for behavior, ECOG, fMRI, and neurons. You guys were fantastic and we were so lucky that we were able to get some TAs working on the projects this year to help with everything. So we have an award for best TA 
best project TA, which will pop up here on the next slide, maybe. Uh, the suspense is killing me. Oh, God. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. Well, we might have lost our slides again, but I will say that. Hold on, was, I can share the slides. Hold on. You can share the slides? OK. I can do it. I can do it. Yeah, one second. This is not. OK. <laughs> and That's OK. There. Apparently, Alness is going to tell us a few jokes in the meanwhile. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh am I? Okay. Really? Are you going to uh, do this? You can't. Okay. <laughs> we declared a many way tie among all of the project TAs. You guys all had, first of all, had incredible background knowledge, but also you became experts in these data sets just overnight from when we were putting them together to the start of the course. People really dug into this data and they were able to help the teams with them. You guys all covered at least two time zones. Some of you covered a lot more than two time zones, which is really crazy. And you mentored 10 groups every two to three days on these projects. So really amazing work, you guys. And it made a really big difference to the course. Uh, next slide. Um, let's see. These are just a couple TAs who stand out for one thing or another. Alessandra somehow mentored 13 groups on projects, which is a ridiculous number of groups to work with. Uh, if you want to maybe just pop all of them up. Uh, most specialized, we had Nicholas, who was the one TA for behavioral data sets. So thank you, Nicholas, for learning both the uh, IBL and the mouse behavior data set and working with groups on that. Um, most time zones covered, Andrew Bender covered four time zones, and I'm not sure when he sleeps, but that is fantastic. <laughs> and uh, most flexible. So we had a handful of TAs who are willing to switch data sets at the end there and work on new data sets after learning an initial one. So you guys really did a ridiculous amount of work for the projects in, in Neuromatch. And yeah, this really couldn't have gone on without you. So final slide on projects. Uh, we want to thank all 283 project mentors that met with the groups. Hopefully these names are, are rendering for some of you guys, but yeah, these guys met with groups a couple times a week to talk with you guys about your projects and hopefully give you some sort of guidance of some sort that was useful. Uh, huge thanks to all of the faculty and uh, postdocs and the folks who are willing to make time to work with the groups and help them figure out what were they were doing with their with their projects and figure out a direction to take. Um, it was really a, a big contribution to the projects this year. So with that, thanks to the mentors, I think I'm now handing it on to Mohammed, who's back and has joined us and will be talking about outre outreach and DEI. Hello, everyone, again. Uh, I don't know, Crowdcast doesn't seem to be liking me, it keeps dropping me off. And I can see you for some reason, but it just tells that I'm not there. OK, so I'm going to be talking about like the effort that happened regarding like the outreach and finding like more people and as much as, as many people as possible to join NMA. Can we go next slide, please? So first thing about the whole thing about anime in itself is that the core idea was to make a summer school that is more inclusive, that is more equitable. Uh, and we don't even, we didn't even look at the idea of diversity in the first place. For, for us, the idea is to have like equal opportunities or equitable opportunities and more inclusive environment. And diversity should be the byproduct of that. So for us also, the idea of that like, diversity does not only cover like race and ethnicity and gender, which is the more traditional uh, ideas when we think about it, but it also includes things like age, national origin, religion, disability, gender identity, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, education, marital status, language, and physical appearance. So it was uh, very important for us to actually uh, try as much as possible to have these, uh, in, like this inclusive environment and make it work for everyone as much as possible. So we this year we had over 5,000 total applications and we accepted about uh, 4,800 ap applicants. These applicants coming from 117 countries as opposed to around 70 in the last year in NMA 2020. 
and we accepted from 114 of those countries. Uh, around both courses had about 100 countries roughly, but we have of course more people from computational neuroscience since this is like the course that we started with, but now we have also the deep learning. So we're attracting even another group of students, uh, which are the more uh, students who are coming from a technological background. And also the idea of having a deep learning course would help us also go to even more areas because deep learning is a much more common topic. So if when you look at this map, it's like, it's really nice for me to look at, but it's, it's still, we still have a lot of work to do. And that's why we actually need you because we were working in countries, we we're trying to attract people from countries that we don't know what is the underlying infrastructure. So we actually need you to help us because especially people from those countries or from neighboring countries will know even better than we do. Mohammed, can I interrupt briefly? I yes. think you touched on something that also uh, uh, Ella touched on already, but is really part of the fundamental spirit of Neuromatch Academy, which is that we're always trying to improve. We're always trying to do better. And we always have each other's back and helping each other out. And it's such a fantastic community. And I can only invite all of you to, to, to participate in whichever way you can. Yes, definitely. OK, so can we go to the next slide? Yeah, and we can see that we have like distribution of uh, CNNDL. Yeah, we actually have some regions where last year we didn't have any students from those countries, like Central Asia, for example. We didn't have any students from Central Asia last year. And this year we managed to get uh, students from different countries in Central Asia. And actually one fun thing about outreach, it was a very good geography practice. Oh no. Mohammed, we lost you, come back, please. I think he was going to say very good geography practice, something like that. <laughs> oh no! Oh. <laughs> well, I'll pick up where where he left off just for two Please seconds until we get him back. Um, it was good geography practice for me too, uh, and it, it helped us understand, you know, where we need to be. Hey, Mohammed, am I back? I just filled the gap while while we were waiting for you to come back. So please, thank continue. you. Yeah, so it was a it was a really good geography practice, and we also got to learn a lot of cool flags of countries that people are not usually familiar with. But yeah, it was a really it, like it's a really good experience for all of us. So can we go to next, please? Yeah, and also we can see that the students, like other than the regions, we also have a. Like it's not still perfect that for the gender uh, for gender distribution, but in comparison to fields like computational neuroscience, this is actually a higher representation than what is common in the field. But still, we would still want to improve more and more. And that's again, I'd have to reiterate, we need you for that because you know one of the reasons why outreach was even so, like success, more, success, more successful this year than last year is that we had a more diverse outreach committee volunteers. So everyone would be able to know how do I approach the people from a certain country because I come from this country. Uh, okay, so here we go next. Yeah, and we also had uh, this idea of the pods that have different languages. So this year we had eight different languages. Um, and one of the reasons why we wanted to focus on this too much, because like there is a very gap in knowledge that is because of how science is documented and disseminated in English. So it causes a gap for knowledge for countries that do not speak English. So the idea of creating this kind of uh, diverse language pods that would help to actually even improve the documentation of science. So you will even see some of the videos, they have Spanish subtitles, some have Mandarin subtitles, and we invite you to try as much as, if you want to translate it to even more languages, then yeah, please do. That would be uh, something that's even more better than that. And even the TAs, the TAs also come from all over the world. We still want to have more TAs from underrepresented regions. Of course, as you can see, we still have like very large dark spots. So yeah, we're counting on the students of this year to become the TAs of next year. Okay, yeah, and from here, I hand it off to Elnaz, who's going to be 
our, as I called her, our entertainer in chief. <laughs> and she's going to tell us jokes, apparently. Hello. Well, I have, I, I have to put I don't her on the spot. Elena. To hear that. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm putting her on the yeah. spot for that because she's trying to get me to tell jokes. Yeah, as that's a German. Right. Can you imagine? What? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I think that it's the last time we are talking about this Animator's Got Talent. So I know lots of you are excited to go and announce the winners in the social media and Discord. But, well, sorry. Excuse me. If you hear my cat snoring, he's sleeping right beside me. Um, I'm sorry about the loud snores. It sometimes might interrupt. But, okay, let's go to the next slide. Well, this was the first time we were doing this in this uh, virtual uh, set, and, and it, it didn't go the way we were expecting, and especially that we were planning to have a final, including live stream, but it didn't work out. But, well, uh, I'm really happy the way it got, and it made me more exciting, excited than everybody else. Like, I'm, I'm so excited about every work I got. But it mainly became possible with help of some people, uh, including Elena Jacobs, Megan Peters, Beth Sterley, Kate Bonin, and Ella Batty. And we had great work with Maria Mansarian and Daniela Batwalt with the graphic work and the logos and everything artisty you see and as their work. Thanks to them. And let's go to the announcing the winners. So um, exciting. I have some heartbeat sound here to play to make the environment going. Uh oh. So we are uh, going to announce the second place. Who is the second place? Man, also things are there with the picture of the rat. If you click again, yeah, please. <laughs> click again. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Well, this was, she had a nice explanation about this. If you haven't read it, please go back to Discord channels and read what, why she had taken such picture and why she had won this. It's a very deep picture and I really like it. And the first place. Oh. And the winner is Vani Gupta. I don't know if I'm pronouncing the names correctly. I'm sorry if I'm uh, messing it up. But this picture was amazing. It's about, its title is Metacognition. And yeah, it's so good that she has used this uh, tool and made a very good interpretation of uh, Metacognition and picture. Uh, we don't have them right here in this time zone, but um, let's move on. And if any of you hear your name, just... Uh, Drop there in the chat and say, if you're around, we'll bring you up to this stage to uh, talk to you a little bit. Okay, so let's go to the music, my favorite part. Heartbeat. Second place to a group with a lot of names, and most of them have difficult pronunciation, so you read it. I'm not saying it out loud. But their um, song was Anime Anthem, which was really good. And the lyric is amazing. And I enjoyed the conversation going on in the um, Discord. These guys found each other in the Discord channel. They made a group. That was what we were expecting, making friends, creating a masterpiece. And I think that some people that saw the performance, they got interested to put something together and make it with more singers. This is so awesome. I'm really looking forward to see what it turns out. And the first place is unmuted munguses with the perfect feet woohoo and we are gonna have a look on what they've made let's check it out let's hope that the audio works i was let's waiting for that all this time all right you gotta tell me if this sounds terrible let's see what happens huh that's a part of it i think you're muted! Welcome to the wonderful show of the Muted Munguses. We're going to find your perfect fit. Uh. 
have no idea how much I bragged about this work and anybody who came to visit me and so like amazing it was one of the first works that was submitted and I was like this is good this is lovely <laughs> oh <laughs> well, a special thanks to this little artist in contributing to your work they were great <laughs> Well, yeah, we have Isabel here, but I think it's better to have the artist Sonny stage afterwards. If she can't, she is saying that she has other part, other people of the group on the Zoom with herself, so we can meet all of them through Isabel also. Well, by the way, I have a question from you. Um, a, few, a, a couple of nights ago, she was asking about the live stream, and she was like, I'm concerned about it. If you're having this uh, live stream, the time zone is going to be difficult for me. It's going to be like 4 a.m. and I have to go talk to my neighbors that they're going to be disturbed by me. And the part was that she said, I'm living in a house with walls. Excuse me? Like, uh, are there houses without walls that I don't know about or what? Uh, it's a part of new architecture that I'm too outdated. Or but by the way, I'm moving to Montreal. If some of you know that, please uh, find some no wall house for, for me so I could move into a modern style house. Yeah, whatever. Okay, <laughs> let's move on. I, I just go to my heartbeat sound again. Ah, uh, go for the. No, uh, what, what, what's going on? Ah, comedy, comedy, comedy. First place, Anissa Hedifar. Well, um, he actually did a great job. Like, I was expecting more work in comedy, but I understand that it's very challenging for a lot of people, and it's very brave to do it, and it's more brave to do uh, context-based comedy, which is like you have to play with neuroscience contests, uh, which I'm going to challenge Gunnar to do it. A lot in a, <laughs> and um, yeah, she actually stuck to the um, rules as well. She has uh, did done a sit down comedy for almost seven minutes, which was our limit. She she did a great job. I loved her work. And if you guys haven't seen it, just just run and see it after party. Well, just just wait until the party is and that nothing is better than us. But you can go. Check it out after we are done. 
And I want to actually highlight somebody because we didn't have many uh, participants in this part. I, I, it's not, it, it would be really lame to just uh, announce another winner, but I will give this honor to this group of two cans. Well, their, their name is two cans, the birds, but they uh, thought that it's funny if they have this two cans with the birds on it and I'm, and I'm using it against them. It's two cans, so we are calling you two cans. Well. Their joke is amazing. It's laughter and hippie jokes and the group work is awesome. Um, let's go to the last and the most favorite one. Well, if you think I'm gonna announce it so easy, you're wrong. It's, just a, it's the most hard time I can give you. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm, uh, you're gonna give me a heart attack. No, I'm, I'm waiting to see if somebody's gonna yell. Yeah. Uh, Okay, whatever. Go to, oh, what did you do? <laughs> well, the official design is made by Sarah Rodriguez for her second design as she's named it. Let's see, what was it? Yay, your favorite character of anime 2021, Astro Cat with the mouse, which is still included there. I'm happy to see the inclusivity here. And this is great. Thank you, Sarah. Nice win, and I should say that victory in this um, competition was so intense, so tight, and Sarah just got a hit two points from the second one, and it was all like this, all of them, high rates, it was really difficult, intense competition. So I think all of you t-shirt designers are winners, and I have an interesting news for you. We are not putting the other designs aside. Some of us have cleared the wardrobes and uh, dress pairs for putting our t-shirts in it. So we are going to ask most of you to modify your um, designs for printing. And we are going to have all of your work kept in Anime Archive. You are the part of the culture of neuro Neuromatch Arts now. Thank you. Great. And let's do some fun stuff here. Uh, let's have Isabel on the stage if that's possible. Isabel, are and you I, there? And I don't have to wear the same Neuromatch t-shirt over and over again. I can have like oh, 10 of them now. Plenty of them now. I, mean, I only have the one too. I definitely need more. Well, yeah. So um, can you find Isabel there or I can start talking to Gunnar now? <laughs> Well, uh -huh. well, well, Ella finds uh, <laughs> the, the, the right Isabel. <laughs> well, she she's saying she's talking. Well, uh, among this artist, are we only have Isabel? Oh, oh, let me do something else. Let's go to the art highlights. If we have them, also, it's good. Let's go to the next slide. I want to talk about highlight some of the good arts that we have. There are plenty of them, and I'm sorry that I didn't have much time to go through it, but. Um, the comedy that was made by John Lunsell, sorry, I don't go to the last names because uh, I understand I have a hard last name myself. I never mention it anywhere. So, um, yeah, that was an avant-garde, very uh, creative way of comedy. I really enjoyed it. And it was also uh, short and sweet. And the work by Arianta and Parsa was very good doing a special innovation, mixing two uh, instruments, Iranian instruments and a guitar. And this was something that I actually came up with from the beginning and I was really excited seeing it. It was under repeat for days. And the great music by uh, a group uh, named Anime Sucks. Just kidding. Are you sure you're kidding or it's just a indirect way of saying it to us like but but anyway it was great work great lyric thank you and great uh photographs for yulin montana and petros um good pictures great ideas go check them out and i cannot mention again all the t-shirt designers you're all the highlights of anime art Thanks to you all people who participated in this. You brought us joy and I hope that this brought you to the same amount of joy we felt. And thank you for our uh, 
great artists. Two of them are here, Megan and um, Gunnar. And we have Marius in the chat too. I saw him talking. Well, um, uh, Isabel, where did Mohammed go? Where's Isabel? Where's nobody coming? Uh, we've invited Isabel, but uh, I don't know. There might be some technical issues here. We'll 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 see. So why don't you tell us a joke? Again. Okay, um, I'm challenging Megan and Gunnar here, both of them, to tell us a joke. Oh, oh. sorry, Megan, it was a surprise, but. I thought it's not fair. <laughs> so you 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 realize that you're asking a German who 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 well, you know everyone knows that Germans are, are very well known are you for their that humor, Germans right? don't do comedy though. Okay, so 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 the only <laughs> the only jokes I know are the jokes that my uh, six year old tells tells me, and actually there's also some jokes that uh, my my eighteen year old tells me, but I cannot repeat them here on screen. Um, so, so the six-year-old is, is a Star Wars fanatic, and and so it'll, it'll be a, it'll be a Star Wars joke. So, so the joke goes: um, uh, Why did Luke Skywalker cross the street? To get to the dark side, of course. Okay. See well, German jokes. You asked for it. I don't know if it's German joke or a scientist joke, but well, uh, um, let's see what Megan has to. This is totally not fair. You didn't give me any preparation at all whatsoever. Well, that was because Gunnar saw what I did in the morning with Brad and. Okay, well, Gunnar could have warned me. And, uh, hey, <laughs> like, I've sent you a cheat sheet already. <laughs> Oh no, I don't know any good jokes. Swear to God, I, I do not know good jokes at all. No, but you have to take Mohammed back. He should save us here. <laughs> I think my joke is is even worse than Gunner's. But let's let's give it a try. We'll do something. No, I, I really like it. My jokes, plural, are even worse than Gunner's. I just don't know any. No. <laughs> oh gosh. Um well, yeah. my how many jokes did I tell my nephews? There are a lot of cheers going on in the chat for you. Just, just say it. See okay, this is going to be so bad. You totally put me on the spot, and this is the only thing I can think of right now. Um, what do you call a fish with no eyes? A fish. <laughs> oh, it works. It works. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> that was good. So, well, um, there was a cheat sheet people I send them, and they're not even checking that out. So, I'm going <laughs> to read one of them out loud. So, why neurons like to sleep on a bunk bed? Because they like higher resting potential. <laughs> That's pretty good, actually. That's so funny. You should not you come on. <laughs> See, I have to say, this is we, funny. We, oh, we need the laugh tracks. <laughs> <laughs> What's the Sleeping Brain's favorite rock band? This is easy. Say, don't tell. Well, this can be a GRE test. Come on. REM. REM, yes. Yay. <laughs> Well, um, Mohammed was also saying, I did that in the morning too. Mohammed was suggesting some easier GRE tests for us that we are not English speakers, that the verbal part is hard. So the question is that, how do you put a camel in a fridge in three steps? I, what? <laughs> <laughs> to put a camel in the fridge. Oh, I, I heard you the first time, but I have no idea. <laughs> well, mm, you open the fridge, you put the camel in, and close the fridge. Three steps. Yeah, you should laugh now. <laughs> oh, I, I know the joke, so I'm like, you know. Well, it's, oh, man. Yeah, it's so old. It's like when, when I was a kid, I used to kill everyone with this, and, and it people were killed already because it was so lame. And also like the the, the following is that like, how do you put a, an elephant in a fridge in four steps? So it's like, yeah, you, you open a fridge, you take the camel out, you put the elephant in, you 
close the fridge. Yeah, please laugh now. This is funny. Yeah. Or like the question is like, is how do you put five elephants in a Volkswagen? Well, one is a driver, one is in a passenger seat and three in the back seat. So they're all set. Well, but I think I should finish now. If Isabel is not coming, somebody mute me here. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell another joke if you want, but I think we should continue on. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. People are not annoyed yet. Uh, well, Isabel wants to try again. Yeah, why not? Well, um, I think, um, do we have, oh, Kimia Kamal is here. Uh, Kimia, do you want to come on a stage? Hello? No, I think I think the chat's delayed uh, about fifteen seconds from us, so they won't be able to respond. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, want... we can we can move on. We can pull people up if we're able to. If the technology. Yeah. Is... Okay. Yeah. I I'd better to mute my my. Yeah. There's no talking. <laughs> okay. Let's advance the slides. Yeah. Thank you all for participating. You're all inspiring. You're great, and keep going. And oh, I, I forgot to tell Ad, we have a good um, package of prize for you. We are, we are keep in touch with you and tell you about it. And I can say that one of them is to buy me something pretty. But um, yeah, the rest will we'll tell you about it. And thank you. And we had a Simon. Seriously. <laughs> Bye -bye. That's awesome. Yeah, we even made uh, emojis of Simon, like doing the thumbs up and thumbs down. <laughs> yeah, and I, I was I the only you. one who are who was allowed to use it. And I and I reread it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's advance the slides. Let's uh, see what we else we have. Well, you all know this anime is built with love from many, many volunteers. And maybe Megan, you want to talk about this because you're kind of like the uh, grandmaster orchestrating all the volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> One of the many, many, many people who are orchestrating the volunteers. You guys, we have like hundreds of people who are organizing anime, hundreds of them. And some of them are doing all sorts of things all over the place all the time. And some of them have one very specific job, but without it, anime just would not happen. And every single one of those hundreds of people is volunteering their time too. So we love you guys and we're here to build this for you. And so now we get to talk about some of the amazing statistics and people who are behind the curtain, um, behind anime, behind the scenes, making sure that things don't crash and that you all get into your pod and that the portal reflects your pod appropriately and the emails all go out on time and don't get stuck in spam and uh, also all the curriculum works and all of the, yeah, everything. So um, let's do this. So uh, we're gonna talk now about the messaging systems that we use a little bit here. Uh, we had some amazing support people in the Discord server uh, for you all. So the Discord was new this year. Uh, last year, if any of you guys did uh, Neuromatch Academy last year, You'll remember that we had the Neurostars Forum, which was great. And INCF, we're so grateful for, for their support and helping us build this forum and onboard everybody. Um, but one of the things that uh, we heard from you guys is that you really wanted to have a real-time communication platform. And so we built that for you. We, um, we got a Discord server and we figured, oh, we'll just put together a quick Discord server. How much work can that be? It won't be too much work. And it turns out that building a Discord server that has the infrastructure to support 2,000 of you at once um, with support tickets and all sorts of stuff um, makes, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, and so we had uh, a small-ish group of us as support staff um, and each of us resolved about 80 of the support tickets that you guys all raised, which is I can't get into the Discord or I need help finding my pod or I need something else. Um, and we had, uh, I think we just looked this morning, we had over 3000 people in the Discord server. Uh, so that's pretty amazing. That includes about 500 observer students, which is also very cool. 
Um, and we had two incredible staffers who helped resolve over 200 of these tickets each just to help you guys feel like the community is here for you and to help you find where you needed to go. Um, and so we just wanted to highlight some beautiful faces of our volunteers here uh, to show you how many wonderful, beautiful, amazing, driven people are here to support, uh, to support you, to support the students and teaching assistants. So um, up here, you'll see that these are some of the kind of departments that we had, um, but some of them aren't really departments, they're just working groups, and then we end up kind of spinning up other groups if we need them. Uh, and so we here's kind of the beautiful faces of the DEI, uh, community. Here's the beautiful faces of the curriculum folks. Here's all of the people who were helping you find your way in Discord. Here's the people who helped train and, and nurture and support the teaching assistants and make sure that they know all the materials and know how to help you all go through the tutorials. Um, so really huge special shout out uh, to the instruction team that the amount of, they support like 250 teaching assistants. So that's pretty, pretty fantastic. Um, and we have the projects team. We have a lot of the folks on the projects teams and also ended up helping on the mentors team. Uh, we, we have a, a whole team just for the regional tech stack in China and the, the particular challenges that China brings because China blocks certain IP addresses. And so we have to mirror all of our technology on, on platforms that are available in China. Uh, so we have a fantastic team who's willing to basically copy paste all of NMA into some other platform so that everyone in China can access it. So we're super grateful to them. And then, you know, the administrative team, administrative is not something that anybody like grows up thinking like, man, I really want to do that. That sounds awesome. But it's the administrative team that answers the emails, uh, that monitors all of the, the portal stuff and makes sure that your portal is correct, that makes sure that your payments go through, that makes sure that the teaching assistants get paid. Those are important things. And so the administrative team, um, I'm, I'm really grateful to all of these wonderful people. And then we also have student recruitment. Um, and so these are people who helped reach out to um, with the diversity, equity, inclusion and outreach communities um, helped go for um, for uh, bringing students into Neuromatch Academy, reading every single one of your applications and evaluating it and making sure that we're letting in as many people as we can who are going to have a good time. You know, if you come in, you've never seen a for loop in your life, you probably are going to need to do a little more brush up before you do Neuromatch Academy. Um, but we, we aim to let in as many people as possible who will be able to do the tutorials. And that's all thanks to the student recruitment team. And then we've got on the technical side, the video and notebook production people. Look at all of these amazing people who made that beautiful notebook and all the beautiful code work. The content reviewers who make sure that all of the um, all of the content actually makes sense, that the answers work, that all of the code works. The copyright team to make sure that we don't get sued by somebody for reproducing a figure that we're not supposed to. This is all super important. Um, and even more, okay. So then remember we had professional development so this is the weekend stuff. Oh, and by the way, don't forget, we also have prof professional development all next week for all of you. So please check your Neuromatch Academy calendars. There's a lot of really cool stuff that's in the, the week in between Comp Neuro and Deep Learning. And I know you're exhausted. And 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 there will be no tutorials to do. You can just like log in and like yeah. sit on the beach, on the lounging chair, in your bed, wherever you want, and just listen and take it in. And these are like a la carte, like pick which ones you want to go to. So, uh, and, 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 and maybe maybe we should also say that if you miss some or if you have already missed some from the last two weekends, they're all recorded, they're all still available. Just go into the Crowdcast, select the right session and you can watch it again. Yeah, that was the menu at the top um, that, is, uh, that shows you all the different sessions. The that schedule. Yeah, the schedule menu at the top, that's gonna show you all of these sessions as well and all the recordings. So we've got lots of cool stuff for you that ranges from kind of almost philosophy all the way through like how to do pre-registration, open science, um, how to do good code review. There's lots of cool stuff next week. So thanks so much for the professional development team for those things and also for the weekend events that they had all the way through the school. 
Communications team, these folks not only help deal with the email, but they help do Twitter. So these are the folks who are actually tweeting. Uh, these are the folks who are running, we have Facebook and Instagram and all sorts of other stuff too. Um, and so thanks so much to all of the communications folks, the technical team who keeps the lights on, who does all the Amazon web server backend stuff, everything. Uh, I'm getting kind of an echo. Can, some, can we mute? Sorry. Um, and then uh, finally, student experience and art and illustrative work. Um, so this is all like what helps make NMA come alive and be beautiful. Um, and also the beautiful comedy and music and t-shirt contests and photography contests that we just that we just saw. Um, oops, hold on. Uh, so this is then people who actually build the content. Day leads who are responsible for making sure a day comes together, that the multiple people who actually uh, do the lectures and the tutorials and all that stuff actually like stitch it together into some cohesive whole. This is our curriculum committee from last year. So this is who helped build the computational neuroscience uh, curriculum that you uh, that you guys went through this year. Um, and then these are our lecturers from last year and this year. And so you will recognize a lot of these faces um, from your tutorials and videos. Um, and then we also have the people who are kind of actually pulling the strings and running the whole thing and making sure that everything stays on track. And so that's the board of directors and the 2021 executive committee. And so these are the folks who make the timelines, who make sure that the infrastructure works um, and who are uh, largely the chairs of each of the departments that we have to make sure that everything stays on track. So do you guys see how many people there are? It's incredible. Um, and I feel super grateful. And, and, and those are not all, actually. No, oh, that's not all. I think we have a whole list of people that's like not even their faces are on here. Yeah, we're still, we're still so practicing. Ones. So if you're here, here and you have, you've contributed as an organizer to NMA and you didn't fill out the little thing that we sent around in the organizer Slack, please do that so that we can keep track of who's doing what and we can thank you properly. Yes, and we still have a lot of volunteers to spotlight also, so keep an eye on that as well. Cool. Uh, yeah. And I want to also give a shout out to Brad because he was the one basically taking out all of our, uh, like our diversity and equity and inclusion. Like, hey, can we make this special case for this? And Brad has to do all of the technical <laughs> things about that. And then he was like, everything he just, does all of those bifurcation, bifurcation, and then it's like, according to him, is like 16 times more complex than NMA 2020. <laughs> so Brad, Brad, Brad is really like sort of like the angel in our organization. He, when, whenever we're like, oh no, we can't possibly do that. This is just too much work. Students or TAs or organizers or volunteers just can't be asking for this. Then Brad goes like, no, but really we should be doing this is the right thing to do let's do it and, and this is why to... so many amazing things has, have happened it's all thanks to brad and so brad from the bottom of my heart you, you're awesome and we're so happy and, yeah. and, and, and fortunate uh, to have you. you have no idea how patient he is and how much available he is he's always available answering all the texts answering all the question very kind and patiently doesn't matter how busy he is. This is amazing. And it's always one of the role models, like beside Megan and Gunnar and all the board of directory, he's one of the role models for me. For me too, absolutely. Okay, I think we're getting close to the end here. We should uh, still thank um, the people and the organizations that allow us, yeah, the sponsor slide, um, that allow us to actually uh, make NMA available to anyone, regardless of your financial abilities. Um, and so all these people essentially have donated a significant amount of money to us um, that, uh, you know, pays pretty much only this teaching assistance. Um, and then we have a little bit of extra costs in terms of tech, you know, licenses for your Zooms and stuff like that. Um, but uh, but the, 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 the big bulk of money is essentially just to pay the TAs. Um, we as organizers are all volunteers, as we said. We, we don't take a penny. We gladly donate our time for this. 
Okay, what else do we have? Did we missing anything? To the future! Ta -da! So we always have giant plans, which is uh, you know it's, it's a fun thing to have, uh, and we we joke around. We have like our own little Slack, right? And we have a special channel in there that's called Saving the World, and so that's kind of how it feels like sometimes. And and we we really want to push further and do more. And maybe Megan, you want to lay out because you probably are the best person to do that. <laughs> I already talked so much. How about we trade off? Okay, I can talk a little <laughs> bit too. So, so for you first, um, you will get matched after this. And uh, so, so keep checking your inboxes. You will get matched to people that are like-minded, other students that are like-minded for potential future collaborations or friendship or whatever it is. And this is really an important part of NeuroMatch Academy. We are a community. We try to build a community. And summer schools are really there to build communities. There's so many amazing stories of now senior PIs who have met their, their, their best friend or their most prolific collaborator at a summer school way, way, way back. And then just kept in touch, started working together, seeing each other at conferences, hanging out, et cetera, et cetera. This is an amazing opportunity for all of you. Use it. Personal so case in point, I met Gunnar at a summer school and I met Marius at a summer school. And now we're working on this. So I think that that's a pretty good endorsement of the kinds of connections that you guys are building. <laughs> yes, and I have met Paul, who's one of the organizers, Paul Schrader at summer school at the one I'm organized, I used to organize, and I've met uh, Megan that way and, and 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 others, of course, but also Conrad I've met that way. I mean, I've met him before, but like I've really got to know him that way. So it, it, it is, and it has lots of stories like that. So really t take it seriously, use it. So there's also lots of other things we want to do for you, for the community. Um, so, for example, it would be really nice if we could create a textbook kind of version with, you know, instructions on how to actually teach these materials so that anyone can essentially take NMA materials and go run with it, make their own course at the university, run a separate course, more specialized, whatever it is, doesn't really matter. We would like to create more courses. So last year, we started with the computational neuroscience course that you just went through. This year, in a week from now, we will be running a deep learning course. Next year, our plan is to add another course to, to this um, list, and hopefully we'll keep building materials like that in the same format because we think that it's valuable and useful. And so if you want, if you have ideas, if you want to help, please do. And then we also have some ideas about creating specialized mini workshops where um, you know maybe in a day or so, um, we can have highly curated materials, NMA style, but very specific to, let's say, a particular analysis technique or a particular toolkit, um, et cetera, et cetera. And as we already said multiple times, you can help NMA make better. Volunteering is really sort of like a privilege. I see it as a privilege. I also see it as sort of like a, a yeah, a, a, a privilege in, 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 in any way. It's a privilege for me to be able to volunteer because I get so much out of it, in particular out of the NMA community. But we realize that this is also a privilege to be able to, to volunteer. So if you can, it would be amazing if you, if you could help. And we count on you, especially now that you have gone through as a student, for example, if you, you know, think that you would be a interested in being a TA, please do. We're always looking for TAs. And then, of course, the, what you also can do is just spread the word, right? So that uh, your lab mates, your friends, et cetera, that they're aware of that of NMA that, that exists. But there's also some specific ways that you can actually get involved instead of just helping spread the word, right? So there's lots of ways that we can improve. So this is the point where we now have some self-reflection where we say, NMA is great. We all love NMA. NMA could be even better. So remember all those, those surveys that we irritate you guys into doing every day. The reason that we're doing that, and please, there's a, a post-course survey at the bottom of your screen. If you haven't done that during the evaluation time, please, 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 please do that because this helps us understand how much you learned. So going from the beginning of the course to the end, um, and there's no grades or anything. This is just which materials were effective, which things worked and which things didn't. And so the ones that didn't work, 
we're going to go back and we're going to look at again and we're going to try to make them even better. And you can see that we did that this year. We, we significantly revamped. We completely like tore apart and rebuilt from scratch several of the days based on the feedback from last year. So we know that there are weaknesses in the curricula, in the curriculum, in the tutorials, in the way that we're doing projects. So please give us your ideas also in ways that we can be more inclusive. So we're always looking for ways to be able to uh, reach more people and to deliver the content in ways that are accessible to more people. So this is as maybe as, as simple as something like, oh, let's translate uh, the captions into another language. But this could also be ways to think about how can we bring NMA to communities where electricity or internet is hard to get or very expensive. So if you have ideas about how we can be more inclusive in any possible way, please let us know. Please tell us how we can be better and we will always strive to be better. Um, and so uh, this, this is where, again, we're going to do a shameless plug. Please fill out this final post course survey. Uh, check Discord for links, but also it's at the bottom of your screen if you're a student, um, because this is, this is huge. This is how we understand how we can be better. Um, and it also helps us demonstrate to the outside world how special NMA is uh, and how we're doing something that's very different. And uh, that also helps us go to granting agencies and say, look at how cool this thing is that, that we built. Please give us some grant money so that then we can support people who cannot pay the course fee and then they can waive the fee and we can actually like bring them in anyway. So these are all things that we really need your help with, we need your participation. Um, and so here's some concrete ways that you can get involved. Uh, so uh, first, all those surveys. Well, now we've got a bunch of data. Um, and some of you uh, agreed very generously to allow us to look at your Zoom transcripts. So we recorded some of the pods where everybody said yes. And we're just going to look at the written transcripts, not the video and the audio, of course, but just the written transcripts. We've got a team who wants to look at these transcripts and understand through natural language processing. Hey, it's like meta, you know, NMA, um, trying to understand how people will actually um, uh, communicate with each other and how those communications lead to better learning. And we've got a giant pile of survey data too. Uh, and so we need people to analyze it. So if you want to analyze data, please come help us make NMA better. Um, and we mentioned the book. So we want to make instruction manuals. We want to make something that looks even more like a textbook than the Jupyter Notebook, something that's got like instructor hints, the voice of the TA, uh, be able to do NMA on your own or create your own pod and have the instructor like user's manual right there. And last year we were starting to talk with MIT Press. I hope they're still interested. So uh, this is maybe an opportunity for you to be able to actually help uh, produce a textbook that then can be the NMA textbook and get used kind of everywhere. Um, and then we've also got some fun optimization stuff for you guys to do. Uh, so uh, remember the Neuromatch algorithm. This helps put you in pods with people who match you based on data set preferences and time zone and language and junior, senior, you know, level of education, educational background and all sorts of other stuff. If you want to help make this algorithm better, and you've got the, the skills or the, the drive to do that, please come help us improve this algorithm. Maybe we can package it into an API and make it even easier to use. So we've got all sorts of fun stuff for you to do there. Um, and uh, then, of course, what should we add? What should we improve? How should we create new courses? What should they cover? Um, all of that stuff. How should we change the curriculum, change the delivery mode? Basically, we just want to hear from you. How can we be better? Um, and then, of course, outside NMA, we also have the conference. So we'll be running the NeuroMatch conference in the fall. Uh, and if you and your group project feel like you want to share something, we highly encourage you to submit to the conference. Uh, so more details will be coming on that soon as the conference side of the organization starts to come online and starts to plan. Um, and then we're also talking about uh, I'm working on a Neuromatch journal. Uh, and so this would be a publication venue for some of the stuff that maybe you guys started in a group project. Um, and so this is all ways that, that we hope that you will get involved, that we hope that you will join us, join the Neuromatch movement beyond just Neuromatch Academy. 
um, this year, but also next year and all of these other ways in the future. Uh, so I think that is it. Yeah, we love you. That's it. Come join us. We want to be a huge, big family with you guys and just um, keep spreading the love around all over the world. More countries, more continents, including Antarctica. Um, you know, let's, let's just, that's it, I guess. Just come join us. And we love you all. Yeah. <laughs> it's really true. We are about the community. We are, when I said we have each other's back, it's really the way it is. We, we have this little saying in NMA, there's NMA magic happening. And NMA magic happening means practically that there is a problem that appears somewhere, something that needs to be done. And magically, someone actually takes charge of it and solves it. That's the NMA magic. It's essentially us having each other's back at all times. And that's not just in organizing Neuromatch Academy. It is also sort of like in our professional or private lives. If someone is going through a hard time, we always help each other out. And you're now part of this community. And we're very happy to have you all on board. So with that, thank you so much again. Congratulations on the completion of the course. You all did amazing. We've seen it. And maybe we should just show the last slide because there's lots of thanks 